and welcome to the Oopsie Daisy YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be creating my media journal, something I've wanted to do for a really long time and I've been waiting for the tools to do it and we finally created a range that is going to be perfect for this. Um, I'm going to be using the Teal journal. This is our Two Can Do It Oopsie Daisy journal. It is an A5 journal which is a change for me because I've been used to using B5 for a while now. But I thought for the format of a media journal, A5 would work really nicely because it would mean that if I want to create a single page for a film or TV show, there wasn't too much space for me to take up. Um, and hopefully I will fill this journal up pretty quickly with all the things that I want to include. It is a media journal, but I'm focusing on film and TV, so it won't be for books or audiobooks. So I've actually phrased or named this a watch book. I don't know if that's been used before, um, but I was thinking around what I could call it and I thought watch book worked really nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm setting up my journal is just creating the This Journal Belongs To page. So I've added in my name using the Movie Night font, which is kind of a mid-century retro style font. I want to add a little bit of decoration to this page. I normally just add my name in and we've also added on the front cover the reasons why I journal. So what I'm popping in there is just some scrapbooky style elements that kind of represent what I'm using the book for. So this watch book is not going to be for any particular year. I'm going to do it. I'm starting it now. Um, I am going to include all the films that I've seen in the cinema um, in this year, which is 2023. But I will go from TV from now onwards. And it may be that the book runs longer than a year. It may be that I'm done in six months. It's really going to be one of those, see how it goes, um, use it until it's, until it's full up. Um, I have purchased some um, post-it notes. These were actually from Amazon. I can link them in the description below if anyone's interested. Um, you got kind of, I think 12 different colors within the pack. And I thought they would be perfect for using for like little bits of scrapbook paper. So what I've done is gone through the packs and selected the colors that went with the color palette that we've used for the movie night collection, which is like a kind of, ready bluey like vintagey versions of those colors you can see on the screen there and then i'm taking those bits of paper and i'm just going to rip them up and add it in like a scrapbook style i do play around with the format of how i'm going to lay this out quite a lot um just because i wanted to get the first page looking really cute and i've added in spielberg who is our movie loving gonk um onto the front page he's a vinyl sticker um that we created for this range um, he's really adorable. We've got Spielberg, the gonk, and we have Stevie, the TV. So together they are Stevie Spielberg, um, which we thought was really cute. And we like to have our characters and give them names. So yeah, he's perfect for the front cover of this, I think. And then I'm gonna add in some different stickers and some washi tape. We've got this popcorn washi, um, which is adorable for the movie night range. And I'm just, again playing around i'm going to remove this these tweezers are perfect for my um indecisive brain to pick up the stickers that i put down and move them around just so that they're in the right place and it's all layered up just to give that kind of scrapbooky effect hopefully you'll enjoy what i've created in the end i'm also using the film strip washi which is this one which again is another washi that was designed for the movie night range and then we have a tv washi um, again that was created for the movie night range so it's really based around film and tv we wanted to make it so that it works for everybody whether you watch your films at home or whether you're a film lover and you like going to the cinema hopefully this range has got a little bit of everything in for you um, I personally am a huge film and TV lover. Um, I'm pretty rubbish at reading books, which is why I was excited about setting up this sort of media journal. I see lots of people with um, kind of book journals online um, and I can't create that because I don't read enough books, but I do watch a ton of films at home and in the cinema. 
So I've created that cover page and now I'm gonna go on and set up my um, first page in the journal. I flipped past, past that first page, the first double page in any journal. Never really lays flat because of the way that the pages are glued to the cover. So I've gone past that first page and I've gone to the second one and I'm using um, a very mid-century retro style. It's gonna be kind of signage to create a cover page for what this book represents. So as I said, I'm calling it a watch book. So that's what I'm gonna have on the cover. And I'm using the post-it notes to bring the color to the page because they are literally the perfect colors. They match the color tones on the sticker sheets perfectly. Um, and top tip, I've got this pen pot and I use it as a rubbish pot when I'm cutting um, and tidying as I'm going along, just because I find that it keeps everything a bit tidier on my desk so i don't know if you saw because i was chatting when i did it but i used our new mid-century signage stencil to trace out these shapes and then using that stencil again just to figure out how i want to position these on the page and then i'm going to be adding a um, arrow kind of sign that comes out of the top of that and then a sign underneath that it all comes from and then i'll add the kind of framing that that sign would uh, attach to my inspiration for this i guess is if you think of like the diner signs or the movie signs of the 1950s americana style that's what i'm going for here and hopefully you'll see that as we go through that's what i'm creating so i've just penciled those onto the page so that i know where i'm positioning everything and then I'm going to go ahead and stick these little pieces of paper down. Um, I'm just going through my scrapbook paper and figuring out what I want to use for the main sign. And after thinking about doing it black, I actually decided that I'm going to actually pencil it in um, with some coloured pencils to add to the colour for the framing. Um, and it works really nicely. So I'm just penciling the sign you can't really see it here hopefully you can if you look really closely i'm using pencil just to make sure everything's in the right place before i go in and do it in pen um i am going to be using my um pigma micron 04 which is my pen of choice i've actually gone through a couple of those this week so i i do end up disposing of one of these pens and I'm using these colored pencils just to add in some background color. I thought about using pen for this, but because I'm gonna put the post-it note pieces on top of it, I thought because they're a little bit see-through, they're not the thickest of paper, if I use pen to cover in the frame, it's gonna show through that paper. So instead what I've done is use colored pencil and then I will draw in the rest of the signage with pen, just as the outlines and the arrow there also with pen. And now I think it's finally time for me to stick these down and I'm gonna use my glue dot roller, which is actually from the Oops Daisy store. I get through quite a lot of these. They are, um, even if I didn't sell them, I would use them. <laughs> That's how good they are. Um, I really like them because you don't have to wait for it to dry. It's not as messy as like a liquid glue. Um, and they're pretty, um, nifty and that you can glue quite small pieces without making a mess so i'm gluing these pieces down and hopefully by now you're starting to see the vision of what um, i'm wanting to create and then i'm using the movie night font just to write on top of that signage um, and i'm writing watch book so i'm going to write watch in movie night and then i'm going to go in with a different font to write book um, i think the font that i end up using is the fairy tale font but i will list it in the description below i'll double check that we've got a couple that are quite similar and i always get mixed up um so just writing watch in the movie night and coloring it in a block black color and then i'm going to go through and add in book in that other font below and that will also be a block black color so i think you might see through here this is the point where I'm realizing that this pen is running out and I might have to switch it for a different one. Um, and I'm gonna go round these little pieces of post-it note with the shape just to give them a black outline. Um, 
I in the end decided it's easier to just use the side of the stencil because obviously where I've cut out those shapes they are the same size so it's not going around the outside it's not quite the right sizing so I just use the edge of the stencil just to give them a black outline and make it pop and I love how this looks. I love the color combination. It's perfect for what I was creating. Um, you'll see in a minute, I do have a bit of a nightmare with the arrow and I'll come to that in a second, but I've questioned whether or not to leave it in <laughs> because it was such a nightmare, but I've done it just because I think it's helpful to show that even um, us who record our spreads and edit it down to go onto YouTube, do also have complete nightmares um, with elements of spread that just upset us. Um, and this arrow was one for me. Um, I do end up finding a solution, but it was touch and go whether I rip this page out and start again for a little while. Um, so yeah, I'm going through um, and writing in this text, as you can see. Just wanted to chat with you a little bit about the, the watch book concept and what I'm doing here. Um, this is probably the journal that I've spent the most time prepping the setup, thinking about how I wanted pages to look, thinking about how the layout would be. And I think that's because this is purely a book for kind of enjoyment, really. My other journal, my journal in, in general, is mostly about productivity. So it's about creating a fun spread, but it's about getting stuff done. Whereas this is purely for me to record a hobby that I really enjoy, and spend some time on the setup. So spend a little bit more time creating things that I like the way that they look. Um, and because of that, I think that's why when this goes wrong in a minute, that stresses me out more than it normally does with journal setups. Anyone that watches any of my journaling videos or live streams will know that um, I will often kind of mess up a day or put something in the wrong place. Um, and I'm pretty chill about it. I kind of cover it up, I stick a sticker over it and I kind of move on and I'm not one for, yeah, having a meltdown if my spreads don't lay to plan. But because I've been looking forward to this for so long, um, I've wanted to do a movie range in my journal for oh, years really. Um, I think that's why I'd put a lot of pressure that I wanted this to look a really specific way and it doesn't. So. I love the way that this spread looks, all of it, apart from that arrow. And I've sped this up to kind of like four times the speed because I basically go round in circles. I decide that I'm going to cover it up with green and that that would look really cute. I then draw that out and I do it back to front and I cut it out and realize that I've got the white side, not the green side showing. Then I've done it again and stuck it on and actually it looks quite cute. So then I'm like, okay, fine, I'll outline it. And then in the process of outlining it, I cock it up basically. Um, and I get pen all over the green. So then I have to take it off and then I cut another one out. Um, but of course now I've got an outline around the outside of it. So you have to get it the exact shape to make it fit and it doesn't fit and it doesn't look right. So I then peel it off again. I try to go around it and make a thicker black line, but that just makes more of a mess of it. Um, I'm getting really stressed now thinking, am I going to have to redo this whole thing? So then I stick it down again and try and do an extra bit and I just hate it. So I peel it off again and then I try sticking the green on and cutting it with the green on there and then that doesn't work. And then I try doing it again and it still doesn't work. Then I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Um, so I try one more, um, cutting it out and sticking it on. I must have cut that arrow out. I'm not even kidding, a dozen times. Um, this one doesn't work. And then I think I decide I'm gonna do it in black dot grid paper because you can still see the outline and it doesn't quite line up. So then I'm like, okay, maybe black dot grid paper, you won't see the weird outline and how it doesn't line up properly. So I cut it out of black dot grid. Now it just looks far too like in your face and just takes over the whole spread. So I'm like, I hate that as well. And then I think, okay, maybe I will just color in the arrow with black pen and be done with it. But the black pen kind of smudge, oh yeah, oh, I forgot about this. So I add white dots in it like as if it were like lights on an arrow. Oh God, it's awful. Even watching it back to do the voiceover, it's making me stressed. Um, I hate the way that this looks. 
So then I take this off as well, and then I try coloring it in black, um, but where I'd done gold um, spots to try and be the lights the first time around, it all kind of smears in together and it just looks horrible. Oh, look at my spread, it's totally ruined. So um, I'm like, okay, what can I do? Should I rip the page out? And then I go back to one of the green things that I've done. And I try sticking it on again. I mean, this is the definition of insanity. Do the same thing over and over again and hope that it comes out differently. But what I do when I'm trying to stick it back on is put it slightly off. And actually I quite like the drop shadow effect and it makes the black look like it's purposeful, I think. I get away with it. Um, and yeah, this is how it ends up being um, as a finished project. Honestly, if I'm honest, I think I should have just done a green arrow with a black outline at the beginning, um, but I don't hate it. Um, and it's time for me to move on with my life <laughs> because I must have spent a good 30 minutes cutting out arrows. And yeah, I, I was getting really stressed, which is really unlike me, which goes to show that this journal means a lot to me and I really wanted it to look a certain way. So that was only the cover page. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I've, I've spent probably an hour doing it. This video edited down and speeded up is like 40 minutes. The actual original video was like two and a half hours long. So this was definitely a long journaling sesh for me. But what I want the next page to be is a log of all the films that I've seen in the cinema somewhere for me to add in the stats around them and my own review. What I'm planning on doing with this journal is something a little bit different. I'm going to have these pages in the beginning as almost like an index. And then I'm going to add page numbers to the corner of the journal pages, which I never do. Um, I never really index anything. But what I'd like to be able to do is create a log at the beginning so a Dutch door for film and a Dutch door for TV that is the films that I've watched and the TV series that I'm, series that I'm watching. Um, and then if I decide that I want to create a larger journal spread for that film or that TV show, I can add in the page number underneath the little icon and you can then turn to that page to look at it. So with the films, it means I'm not committed to making like a whole page spread or films that I saw or that I wasn't particularly bothered about or was indifferent to. I'd say if I saw something and I absolutely hated it, maybe I'd want to do a page and write about why I hated it. Um, and the same if, if I absolutely love something. But having to make sure that I do a spread for absolutely every single film that I see, I think is just going to make this feel like a chore rather than and a process of enjoyment, which is what I want the watchbook to be for me. So I'm just playing around with these little um, printed movie posters that I printed off before. I printed off two different sizes so that I could play around with what how I wanted the spread to look because I hadn't really kind of fully decided. And I decided on using the smaller ones and I'm just trying to figure out the best way of doing this layout. So I'm considering whether I want to do kind of a big start page for it or whether I want it to be a vertical Dutch door or a horizontal Dutch door. But you'll see as you're going on and watching the video, um, basically the concept is that I will record all the films that I see and use this as an index for the ongoing journal. So leave myself plenty of room to add in more films and more TV series. So in today's video, I'm only setting up the film elements of this. I'm going to do a separate video for the TV index because I wanted that to be slightly different. Also because I'd spent so long setting up these pages that I knew that this was going to be a pretty chunky video, even without the TV element. So it made sense to kind of have a break because I was getting myself very stressed. Um, and. I find that if you're doing something like this where you want it to be quite creative, you try and do too much in one sitting, you end up doing things for quickness rather than for enjoyment. So I think if I'd have gone on and tried to do the TV pages after this, it probably would have been a bit lacklustre. So um, instead I've just stuck with film and I'm just considering how I want to make kind of place savers for the films that I haven't yet seen. So. 
what I'm ending up doing is cutting some shapes out of post-it notes and it works really nicely. Um, I'm just considering what color to use to go with this. Um, and I end up choosing like a popcorn-y kind of, it's not a yellow, but butter kissed yellow. Let's call it that. I mean, that's a trade name, but I'm going to call it that anyway. Um, and the header for this page is called Pass the Popcorn because I thought that was really cute. And I'm adding that in in the movie night font. And everything on here is quite popcorn themed. So I've used the popcorn um, washi tape to mark the top of the Dutch door. Um, you will have just seen me create that quite quickly in the background. If you haven't seen me create Dutch doors before, I've got a ton of Dutch door weekly videos that you can go and watch where I do it much more slowly. Um, so that you can see the steps but all I've basically done is cut across the page stuck the flap at the top down so that I've got a fixed um, portion across the top of the page and then added um, washi tape across the top of the cut pages so that you can see where they start and end hopefully you've seen that when I start moving the pages and then I'm adding in the header in the movie night font and I'll add some stickers and things as well just to make it really cute um and yeah i personally have a um membership to a local cinema where um we can go as many times as i like without having to pay just pay a monthly subscription um and i love going to the cinema it's really like a enforced relaxation i guess it's like two three hours where i can't check my emails i can't doom scroll social media you're just sitting there like immersed into film um and it's something that i have got out of the habit of doing which is another reason why i was really excited about setting up this journal because i'm hoping it's gonna kind of ignite that passion again to get into the habit i've got into a terrible habit of coming home from work having my laptop open on my coffee table so i never really switch off um, and that is necessary sometimes for me to do some work in the evenings, but I think I can definitely schedule in one night a week, at the very least one night a fortnight to go to the cinema and yeah, have some escapism. So I want to record that in my journal. So that's what this page is for. And you'll see that this year so far, I've only seen five films at the cinema. The fifth film on this spread was actually, I was going to see the night that I set up this spread. Um, and as I go through setting it up, I will give you a little review of each of the films. Um, just a mini review. I'm not a film reviewer, but my, my personal opinions for the films that I've seen so far this year and whether they were overrated or underrated. Um, yeah, if you're a film goer yourself, then I would love to hear your recommendations. I'm always up for watching old movies as well as new movies. Um, yeah i don't really stick to any particular genre of film i like a little bit of everything um i'm just adding on here these are our popcorn page markers oh my god they're adorable and what's quite good to do if you want you stuck it on just snip across so that your page marker is like echoes the shape of your popcorn oh my god it's too cute i love them um and then i'm going to go ahead and cut the shapes out of the post-it notes so that they will be a drop shadow for the films that i've seen but a place marker for the films that i haven't yet seen so i'm going to fit i think it's 12 on each page so 24 over the course of the two um spreads which i think should be plenty to last me for this journal at least hopefully um, I have to go through and count all of these afterwards and realise that I'm a bit short so I have to make some more. Um, I do decide to kind of look at whether I should use two colours and mix them in but I quite like this kind of buttery caramel um, yellowy colour that I've got here. It works for this spread. It does make the camera do weird things and go a bit yellow but that's the autocorrect on the camera. Um, but yes, I'm now counting pages on my leftover post-it notes and cutting some more off screen. Sorry that you can't see that. And then I'm just figuring out where I need to place them in order to be able to fit everything in and also to fit in my reviews underneath. So I'm gonna go through and stick these down. I think the first movie that I saw this year was 
Avatar, the new Avatar. I really liked it as a film. I'm not like a crazy Avatar fan. It isn't one of my absolute favorite go-to films, but I enjoyed it. Unfortunately for us in the cinema while we were there, um, it was a Saturday night that we went to see Avatar and someone had brought their two very young children. I'm talking like four years old and they kept crying and getting up and walking out and walking back in the entire duration of the film. So it kind of spoiled it for me because I think Avatar is one of those films that you need to get really immersed into because it's so sci-fi, because it's so, um, I think, detached from our version of reality. Keep being brought back to being in a cinema by the crying child, I think probably ruined it. And I probably would have enjoyed it more should that not have happened. Um, the next film that I went to see was, oh, Babylon, which I went knowing that it had Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt in it, and that's pretty much all I knew. Um, if you haven't seen Babylon, um, maybe don't read what it's about before you go, because I was like, what the hell am I watching? This film is mad. Um, there are, yeah, it, it it's nuts. Um, all sorts of crazy um, parties from the heyday of the film era. Lots of very odd things happen. Um, it wasn't my favourite. I don't think I'd watch it again. The next film that I went to see was The Whale with Brendan Fraser. Great film, really hard going, quite a hard watch, but like one that you keep thinking about for days after, which is definitely a sign of a, a good film. Um, the fourth film I saw this year was Ant-Man, um, Quantum Mania. This is potentially the only film I've ever seen in the cinema where I walked out. Um, I love Paul Rudd and I love Marvel. Anyone that knows me will know this. It was so bad. The premise was ridiculous. They kind of mixed up the backstory. The baddie in it was so bad CGI. It was just awful. Yeah, couldn't sit through it. It was awful. Um, so that will be getting one star from me. <laughs> um, what I am going to go through um, and add in for each of these films is the date that I saw it, the IMDb score, um, which is the Internet Movie Database for those of you that aren't movie lovers um, or not aware of, of what it is. And also I'm going to give it a rating out of five stars using our Gold Star Washi, which I'll add to the side. So those three pieces of information will be there for every film that I include in the spread. Um, I will then, if I create a page for that movie, later in the journal i'll add the page reference so that i can refer to where it is in the journal and find out use it as a, an index as well as a log um so i'm just adding in the rest of the shape the pages um sorry the pa place markers spit your words out um for the rest of the films in this dutch door and then i'm going to go through and add the information underneath those movies that i've seen the fifth movie on that list, as I say, is the movie that I want to go to see, um, or I, I did go to see the day that I was filming this journal, which is Indiana Jones and The Dial of Destiny. Um, I absolutely love Indiana Jones. Um, I love Harrison Ford and I love the franchise, but it was probably about an hour too long, if we're honest. Um, however they made him young at the beginning of the film, it was incredible um but yeah for me a little bit too long so i've turned the page and what i'm doing next in my journal is creating a films to watch like what i'm waiting for what i'm excited that's coming out and also a movies that have been recommended to me page so when someone says to me oh you really need to watch this i've got somewhere to write it down so that when i'm sat on my bum on a Friday night, scrolling through all of my movie um, formats that I can go, you know, Netflix, Prime Video, all of the rest of it. I got a list that I can go to that I can go, ah, oh, this person said to watch this, let's watch that. So I've used our movie clapper board stencil to create the clapper board. And I'm just going through and coloring that in. I do start off by thinking I'm going to leave a white area on the clapper for me to write on and then I decide afterwards that it would be more true to a clapperboard if I coloured the whole thing in black so I end up changing what I'm doing. 
So I'm just colouring in the bit of this papa board with a black koi brush pen, which is my go-to black colouring pen of choice. Um, I like the flexible tip, I think it makes it easy to colour it in. Then as you see, I give up on leaving the area white and I coloured the whole thing in black. I have to go over it a couple of times just to get that really like matte black that I wanted this to be. Um, and I've just gone down the edge and evened it up a little bit. Um, so colour it all in, hopefully it will all merge in together and it will just be one matte black space. And then I get to play with something really exciting. So when I first said that I was going to create this um, range or we were going to create the range, um, I actually spoke to one of our creative team members, Alex, who is also, I know, um, a big movie fan. And she said, could we create an inky stencil for a film strip? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I kind of started thinking about it and actually it's not as straightforward as it seems because when you think of a traditional film strip, you've got those like little white pieces that are would be left without ink if we're drawing it. And to make them left without ink, you have to have something blocking the way and the pieces would need to float in midair in order for us to block it and for it to be the right shape. So I spent quite a long time faffing about with this trying to figure out how to make it work and i've actually created this two-part stencil so what you do is you create this shape and then you move the stencil over and you lay these lines carefully over the shape that you've already done and you should have the lines running through those side pieces and then you do the second shape over the first shape and those together make a film strip and it is a hell of a lot quicker, and I know because I've done this, than colouring in a film strip, um, like drawing it and colouring it in with ink, because it takes ages, because it's really fiddly because of all of those little holes. So the super inky, inky stencil for this is amazing, even if I do say so myself. It's worked really nicely, and it's created a film strip in no time at all. And I think you could use that as something where you could fill in the names of the films inside the holes of the film strip or you could just use it for decoration like i have um basically it's there for you to use in whatever way you see fit but it works in lots of ways i then try and decorate the papa board with a bit of white gel pen and then i decide i hate it so i go over it again with with black boy um you're seeing a lot of the thought processes of, of joe in this video um where i decide to do something and go back and change it and then I decide to just add on some washi tape and some stickers and just make it a little bit more scrapbooky styly, um, which I love. So I've used the gold stars. Um, I'm thinking about where I'm gonna add some popcorn and then I'm gonna add in my titles. So I think I write can't wait in this corner for films that I'm waiting to come out. Um, I'd probably add the new Marvel releases into that. Um, Thunderbolts I'm excited about because I am a huge Sebastian Stan fan. Um, and then on the other page, I am going to write must watch, I think, um, for things that are recommended by other friends. So I'm just going to go through and trace those in with the movie night um, font again, that retro font. It's all got a very kind of like old school cinema retro vibe to it this entire journal setup which is what i was looking for while we're kind of talking about mid-century vibes the mid-century shape stencil that i used for the watchbook cover page has got lots of different shapes on it and they do combine in lots of different ways if you want to see some examples of how that works if you go onto the product listings on our website um we've included some different mock-ups that show the different ways that you can put things together you'll see now that i have done a rookie error i got too overconfident and i've attempted to write the word must and mixed up the s and the u this really wasn't my day i was making lots of errors so i've gone through and just wipe out that and i'm going to correct it and then color it in and hopefully get away with it can't see it too badly um but it's definitely i think because i'd put a lot of pressure on myself that i wanted it to look nice this journal kept throwing things at me 
Um, and I think the cover page got me into a bit of a funky mood going forward where I made a couple of silly errors. So you can see now I've corrected where I wrote the letters in the wrong order and I'm just colouring in um, the first word of must watch and can't wait just because I liked that kind of mixed aesthetic of the block and then the open lettering. Um, I do end up having to redo a little bit here because the corrector tape peeled up. Um, sometimes if you haven't got it really stuck down then when you start to write on it it comes up to you. Um, but I quite like how this spread is and I decide to go in and grab my grey koi brush pen, like a really light koi brush pen um, and add lines for me to write on so that I know where I'm putting what I'm putting, give it a bit of structure to the page and also add a little bit more interest because all the pages have been quite full and busy. I didn't really want to leave them open and have white space on this page. So I go through and add those lines. Um, on the must watch page, I decide that I want to capture what it is that I've been recommended, who recommended it to me and what channel it's on. I think that will be useful because I don't know about you, but when I'm sat down to watch a movie and I'm like, oh, I really want to watch this. Is it on Netflix? Is it on Prime? Is it on Sky? Have I recorded it? Do I need to download it? Is it on a DVD? <laughs> So having that kind of format of where I'm recording, what I'm going to watch and when, I think will be useful for that. I just want to sit down and watch a film and I don't want to like search endless subscription formats to find what I'm watching. So yeah, adding those lines in just to give a little bit of structure. I'm freehanding it just because it's a really light colour and I quite like the freehand look. I personally haven't had much success with using a ruler and a brush pen um, to create lines. I know some people do do it, but it's not worked for me. And then I'm just writing here what I want to um, record. So it is what I'm looking forward to and when does it come out? And then adding some stickers because when is popcorn not cute? Um, and then I'm gonna do the same over on this side just adding blocks of three lines for the what, when, no, the what, who, and what channel. Um, so I know what I'm recording um, and I'm gonna add a little key to that over on the right hand side to remind me what I need to write down when I'm writing on there. So we're close to the end and I appreciate this has been a long video. Um, it's been so long that I keep losing my voice and having to stop and have a little drink. Um, so for those of you that stuck around and watched the whole thing, I really appreciate you. Um, do make sure you watch to the end because I will be sharing a little giveaway um, for our YouTube channel, which you won't want to miss. But with the exception of adding a couple of extra stickers, this journal spread is pretty much done. And this is the beginnings of my watch book. Um, I'm really happy with it. I know I had a bit of a nightmare at the beginning, but what I've created I think is really cute and I also think I'm gonna really stick with it. So that's the most important part. And I think it's finally time for us to have a look at my journal spreads. So here it is, the long awaited watch book. It's in our Till Two Can Do It notebook in A5. I've created a really cute little collage on the first page just to set my intentions for this journal. And then I've done my watch book cover page, which was not exactly how I wanted it, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in the end. And then I've got my Pass the Popcorn film log where I'll be adding in all the films that I see at the cinema. And then I've got my can't wait and must watch pages to record what I want to watch, what I'm waiting for, and films that have been recommended to me. It's finally time for our giveaway and we're going to be giving one lucky winner their choice of any stencil and any washi tape from the Utsa Daisy website. All you need to do to enter is like this video, subscribe to our channel, and pop a comment below telling me what film that you think I should watch and add to my watch list. We will be choosing the winner at the end of the month and the winner will be announced via our social media so make sure you're subscribed. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this watchbook setup. The TV segment will be coming very soon so make sure you keep an eye on our YouTube channel. 
In the meantime, keep journaling and take care.